the pod. The pod. pod. Ni modo. This is the way it's going to be. Um, so what, what are you recording? You're not able to record yourself? or I, I just, I, you can't see me, but that's fine. You don't have to see me. You're just going to see a, a puppy. So maybe we should explain this to our viewers. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh, we are the Pod Squad. This is the Pod Squad sessions, and uh, we're having some technical difficulties. Um, basically, my uh, my computer's cameras are not working. Um, tried going, uh, trying to try to use the phone and see if uh, that would work, but uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen either. So. Uh, you are going to see my uh, my puppy on camera, um, my puppy who is not no longer with us. Aww. But uh, yeah, but uh, that's okay. I see him every day on here. I see him. Um, so I I'm Belinda, and to my right, I believe is uh, Jose. Wave and, with it just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Here, to the left. My paw. <laughs> <laughs> to the left is uh, Mike. Uh, down below, we got uh, Kitty Cat, um, Susan, and uh, on vacation uh, already is uh, Victor. And um, he's in Tahiti. Yes. Is, is, that, is that where you're at? Okay. Yes. Somewhere yes, in, I'm in Tahiti. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in parts unknown. Parts unknown. Yes, that's right. Although that would really apply to Mike, really, because Mike's the really the world traveler here. So. Man, he's a, oh, he's I know. A, he's a globe trotter, getting his uh, bonus miles on airlines. <laughs> we finally got Mike back. He's been, uh, yeah. Yay. Yay. He's been out and about working. Working harder than us lazy bums trying to finish up school and trying to get out of there. <laughs> How were the uh, concerts, Mike? They look yeah. really, the last one looked really fun. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. Of work, you know, I get some fun. teachers mad at you, you know. Teachers mad, mad at who? You. And me? Why? Mm -hmm. You said we were lazy bums. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, speak for yourself. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm just trying to raise up uh, mic status here in the group. <laughs> let's, let's give our, our our viewing audience that are teachers Belinda's phone number yes. so that way they can That's right. No, 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 no. Comments. Don't know why she has the puppy. <laughs> you can't see what she looks like. <laughs> oh. Come toilet paper your trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i guess that's the impression that a lot of people have uh of us so um hey might as well uh lean into that <laughs> um no excuse me? Uh, huh excuse me <laughs> i said that's the impression a lot of people have of teachers so we might as well just lean into it excuse me <laughs> <laughs> I know Mike does a lot of outside work, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, 
the sun for two months. hot weather. <laughs> 30 days in the desert and then 30 days on well, close to 30 days on the beach. Not quite 30 days, but he's got cool. he's got a lovely tan going on there. <laughs> tan, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, now we're huh? It's good to be home though. I bet. Yeah, I'll be home did you, for did you even did you even get a chance to come back like between gigs or were you just like out the whole time? Went straight from one festival to the next. Dang. Wow. Dang. The day I had in between California and the last gig was a travel day. Yep. That's the rock and roll lifestyle. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Good work. Hope you got to trash a few hotel rooms. <laughs> I put us up in a really nice uh, beach condo. Everybody got their own condo. So three. Nice. Years. Nice. Yeah. So we were like a block away from the beach, and yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. Last time I did that last gig, we were actually in hotel rooms, and, but they put us in nice hotels. I, it doesn't really matter to me, but it's a little bit, little bit more convenient having a house or a condo because they come with washers and dryers and you know kitchens, so you can. Yeah, that's mm. cool. Nice. So when you're working, I mean, it's, I'm obviously you're working, but do you ever bump into or come cross paths with any of the uh, performers? Oh yeah, they're walking around. Sometimes you see them in catering, especially at Coachella. Yeah. Coachella has such high end catering. It's probably the best catering I've any <laughs> in the last thirty years. <laughs> the reason being, you know, they is uh. A lot of performers, they they uh, they eat the same food as the crew, at the same. Oh. Camp. Oh. Same camp. Mm. So you'll see, you'll see them in there getting getting their food. You know, I've I've seen a uh, Ariana Grande and catering and a few others. So cool. Then there's she's a, not making all the donuts, is she? No, I didn't. See, she just. <laughs> <laughs> She was waiting in line with her entourage with everybody else. Yeah. Hopefully she's outgrown that. <laughs> and then uh, now the the catering at the other festival, they have their own artist catering. So they, they're off to their own little VIP areas. But, uh -huh. mm -hmm. we, we, we work all around them all the time. So you see them passing by. Well, cause I, I was watching the Coachella on streaming. I, I was kind of thought it was really cool that they streamed everything. Yeah. Uh, and I was just totally impressed with the size of the, the the structures that they had to build on the desert, which oh, yeah. obviously you had some part in that. And that I was like, wow, those things are huge. Yep. And then they take them down after the show. Uh, that's like, wow. It's like building a city. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it is. Like building a small city. And then tearing it all down when it's over. Wow. <clears throat> and even, like, even though after Coachella, the Stagecoach Festival, the Country Festival, is on the same grounds, they don't leave the stages in the same place. They literally tear everything down and wow. ship it. Like, like moving furniture. But I was like, <laughs> a lot of work, man. But they, mm. when you go in there, there's still some things that are in the same place, but a lot of it has been moved around and Oh, wow. So it's a whole different look because it's a whole different festival, even though it's on the same yeah. ground. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's the, just I mean, the logistics. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then the one on the beach is even more impressive because before you can build anything on the beach, you got to lay down, uh, they call them signal roads. Yeah. Big, thick uh, plastic sheeting. That locked together. And basically, yeah. you're building the road. The military uses it. And, uh, anyway, yeah, so that the 18 wheelers can drive out to the beach. Otherwise, nobody's getting up. Nobody, everybody gets stuck in the sand. Yeah, so wow. The there is, is pretty incredible. Yeah. That makes it challenge. Building these huge stages on the beach is not an easy task. Yeah. Think. Yeah, I saw some of the pictures you put where they were like digging like sand and moving stuff and just, just, yeah, it was just crazy. Yeah. But the roads are the first things that, that go in. And that's that was one of the first jobs I did when I landed was start building those roads. 
It's a lot. It's a lot just building those roads. That's the first thing. But, but how long does that take to like set up everything? How long would you say? Uh, well, I, I traveled there on the 1st of May. Talking about the beach. I traveled there on the 1st of May and the festival wasn't until two and a half, three weeks later. So Dang. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Set up, you know, once the festival is over, about a week to tear it down. Holy cow. Yeah. Jeez. How big is the how big is the um um never mind, I can't think. <laughs> the entire site? No, the uh the the group, uh the like your group of people. Oh, our team, our department? Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. Well, there's several departments, but you know, that's a good question. I never did an accurate count, but I'm gonna guesstimate there's about 20 to 25 people on our team. Uh, but I mean, there's there's so many different departments. You know, right. Artist relations, security. You know. But our particular team, our side up team, we have probably about uh, 20, 25. And some come in earlier, some come in later, and some leave earlier, and some, depending on their job titles and their contracts. Like when I left, pretty much uh, ninety percent of it was done, but there was still a handful that came in later. Mm -hmm. They stayed to finish up the loadout. So my last day was the twenty seventh. I flew out on the twenty eighth yesterday. Yeah, flew out yesterday. So, yeah, it was fun. It was a good gig. Cool, 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 cool. Very. We'll go back out next month. The next the next festival is in Miami. Next <clears throat> oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> you get all these, these cool cities, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I got a month home at home, and then, you know, I'll probably do some, some local gigs. I'm sure I'll get some calls here soon. Do some local gigs around town. I'm trying to see what that new venue out by. Oh yeah, I drove by there. Yeah, I see what's going on over there. I'm I'm interested in going by there. I've already talked to a few people. A friend of mine, her son got a job there. Yeah, yeah. Are, aren't there a few venues, or is it just because I know there's one over there? They set off a general. Yeah, no, I think it is somewhere on there. That's yeah, that's the one. The tech. Uh, Tech port. Tech port. Tech port something. Yeah. Yeah. And then the old Verizon wireless amphitheater is reopening. Yeah. There you go. That's the other one. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, Thank goodness. Yeah. That was a really cool place for concerts. Mm -hmm. Sit out on the lawn and. I saw yeah, Steve Dan there. That was a really good show. And Rush. Rush. Yeah, that's a good place. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of local production work as well with those two places. And then they're supposed to be renovating something gardens. Yeah, yeah. When is that one uh, going to be ready? Do you know? Oh, that probably be another. I'm going to guess two or three, four years. Um, We're going to see something like sixty million dollars into that place. Well, I know they had. Uh, where did they? Where did they have Taste of New Orleans this year? Because that's usually there. Did they have it there this year? I don't know. I couldn't I tell you. I don't know either. I don't think so. Man, they moved it somewhere else this year. I don't know. Uh, probably. They probably moved it to Incarnate Word. Maybe. Yeah, it would have made sense. I don't know. <clears throat> mm. yeah. mm. Good question. I don't know buying for that. Those tour dollars, those production dollars. So it'll be a lot of work locally. Yep, I know, Mike. Uh, you weren't here for uh, our planning, so I don't know uh, <laughs> if you're going to know anything about our uh, our topic today. But uh, jump in if you have any thoughts. Um, okay. I'll kind of let you guys get, run with it and uh, <laughs> do the color commentary. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. All right. Um, I did listen to some of the screaming Jay Hopkins. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, so we <laughs> had decided to um, 
the the last uh, the last show we had assigned ourselves a movie that was on the top yeah, 100 fine. of all comedies that we had none of us had seen just to see whether it was worthy of being on the list or you know whatever whatever we thought of the movie that that's what we were discussing um this time around we decided to do sort of the same thing with music and we chose uh the uh, blues genre um but lists were very hard to find um i found i think a, a total of like three like really good it looked like a good list. Um, it would, so <laughs> um, we came up with Screaming Jay Hawkins. Uh, one of his albums uh, was on one of those lists. And I really only know one song of his that's usually played at Halloween. Um, I put a spell on you is the, the, the song. Um, and I thought, well, maybe we should like listen to some of the other music that's on there. But um, when I started <laughs> when I started listening to the album, um, I don't know. I mean, we did we went in another direction because to me it did not feel like a blues album. But I don't know. What do you all think? Did did y'all even get a chance to listen to it? I didn't get a chance to listen to it. Well. He's I'm familiar like, with his music. I mean, I'm familiar with that song. He's yeah. kind of like the Little Richard of blues. <laughs> he's quite the showman. Yeah. You know? uh, I heard a little bit of Louis Armstrong in there. I, I thought I heard a little bit of Jim Morrison's that screaming screech that he does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and, and even one of his songs, like, okay, this sounds like the Grinch. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of, he he has that that voice. It's just kind of somewhere in the middle of, of all those three. That, that's what that's what it reminded me of. So I didn't listen to all of his songs, but I didn't hear the one. That's the one. Got a spell on you. Got a spell on you. Yeah, it's in a lot of movies. That 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 song. Uh, yeah, uh, but he's considered a blues artist. But that he's not what you call a traditional blues artist. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to call his style because to me it was like there was some bossa nova thrown in there and some kind of big bandy traditional jazzy muse style music. I don't know. I didn't, to me, it did not feel bluesy. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what y'all were well, going to like I, think. And, well, and I, yeah, I was well, like, movie we saw didn't seem like a comedy that much either. So, you know. <laughs> That was one of the things we debated about the movie we saw. Mm -hmm. Good movie, just not on that list, you know. So right. I guess Screaming Jack, uh, is it Jack or Jay Hawkins? Jay, Jay Hawkins. Jay Hawkins. Um, yeah, is that really blues? Yeah, that's. <laughs> so that was on one of the lists. One of the that blues was on lists? one of the lists. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I just I don't I don't know I to me, I just it just didn't ring like blues to me and i thought you know i think maybe we need to pick something else so mm -hmm. um, we, i did listen to it and i i kind of enjoyed the music i mean i actually and i didn't mind the i i do mind some of the screaming <laughs> but overall i kind of like like his oh. vocal quality <laughs> <laughs> but uh I'm like uh, ronnie dangerfield there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it was still, it was still oh, it was like, still on uh, it seemed like such a far left turn that I thought, no, nah, I think we better pick something else. So, um, so we went with John Mayall and the um, Blues Breakers. Um, and this album is the one with um, Eric Clapton. Eric, Eric Clapton. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was a much better choice. Um, it is a subgenre considered uh, British blues. Uh, John Mayall is is British, um, but uh, but I it, it, I thought okay, well this at least looks <laughs> like blues to me. Uh, let's just go. That's interesting. That's interesting because the music there, the the songs were not written by British 
people. No, no. But the musicians were British. So I'm kind of not, I don't know if I buy that they're calling it British blues because it's, it's they American do. blues played by British guys. I, no, I don't know if that British. creates a subgenre or not, but. Uh, they do call it British blues. You do even have it? See, yeah, I read it, you know, because I go, this is, this doesn't sound right either. <laughs> and it doesn't sound like and, traditional. Then I, heard another, then I heard another band's music in their music. So, well, well, okay. So, are we, I guess we can take off from where we are to talk about it. I don't know if you want to go person by person or. No, I think we should just go ahead and throw whatever opinions we have of it in, in the, you know, throw, just throw it in the middle of the floor. Let's, let's see where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what we usually do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then we throw down a little bit and uh, I cut people off and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> well, you admit it. <laughs> No, I, I, I liked it a lot. I, I considered it traditional uh, compared to some, somebody like Stevie Ray Vaughan. Because the reason I compare that is because the first song on the album is, is All You Love, I think. And uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan did a version of that, All You Love. And uh, it's, I was interested in how it sounded different. And compared to Stevie Ray Vaughan, it sounded very traditional. And they had some harmonica in there and it had kind of that dirty feel to it, which I, to me is, you know, like that you're walking through a mud swamp in Mississippi, you know, that, that <laughs> sounded very traditional to me. Uh, and I liked it a lot. I like that kind of traditional blues, you know, you know, music like that. And uh, yeah, you know, I guess Eric Clapton's British and the other guys are British too, but I don't, I mean, and it looked like all the songs were written by uh, by uh, American songwriters, so I considered it a traditional blues, even though everybody in the band was British. I, I don't know. That's <laughs> if they had all been Hispanic, would it have been called Hispanic blues. I mean, you know. <laughs> I, no, I don't know. Um, I, don't know. I, I I I kind of agree with Susan. I didn't hear traditional. I mean, I heard traditional songs. Um, but the composition sounded very, to me, sounded very British 60s. Mm -hmm. I was thinking. Yeah, I, I, I could picture, like, I was closing my eyes listening to it, and it's like, I'm seeing them playing, you know, like, at the cave where the Beatles, you know, uh, got their start. I could see them, like, playing in a little hole-in-the-wall type, you <laughs> they know. Play the, they played one of their songs, too. Who? They they play like a little snippet of um of um, of the Beatles. There's like one where there's like like a long ass drum solo, and when oh, yeah. they come back into it, they play a little bit of the Beatles. I think it's uh it's your birthday or whatever it's called. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. Isn't it that one? No, I don't remember. Yeah, that one. And then a drum solo is not exactly what I think is. Not really blues. Yeah. No. But I mean, I just well, I will say that it was electric. It was, if you go traditional blues, it could be acoustic. But I don't know. I just got the feel of it was like it could have been anybody from Mississippi or somebody playing that that harmonica and the guitar. I mean, that was just my opinion. But uh, I, I think no, it was. I'm I think it was. It was. <clears throat> I think it was British. I mean, it. They're trying to recreate blues music. Yeah. It's not going to come out exactly like, you know, African-American, American, American oh, blues no. artist. Right. No. So, you know, so, it, so it's kind of filtered through these British guys, but Certainly the vocals. you definitely. can tell they love the music. And, and yeah. I'm familiar with a lot of the songs like, you know, Freddie King and some of these guys, songs that they played. I've, I've heard the originals and they don't sound that much different than the originals. They actually sound like a lot like the originals, except there's a few little things like in the way they sing it. They don't have that same kind of. No voice, you know, and so no. of course, I mean, they're trying to the best they can to make it sound bluesy, but yeah. they don't have that sound. And then, um, you know, there's a few little other things like there was a there's a keyboard they use in there called a Hammond B3, yes. uh -huh. and yes, I, yeah. I can't. Exactly. I, that's like real '60s right there. Whenever you yes. hear that that, that organ, and so that yeah. definitely kind of like takes yeah. away from the bluesy part of it, which I didn't, I don't really like too much. Really, 
I'm I, I like that organ too much. I mean, I like it on some songs, but but on, but in blues, I'm not too crazy about it. And if you guys don't know what the Hammond is, it's that organ that looks like the church ladies, you know, <laughs> that they play, you know, that wooden one that's mm -hmm. got all those switches and the knobs, and you know. Mm -hmm. I, I had a little, yeah, I had a little baby organ when I was uh, when I was. Uh, little i guess i don't know what i guess i was around maybe seven or eight um, but a lot of bands during that time used them you know and if you look yeah. look at a lot of those british bands like uh, deep purple and you know they had that organ in there you know those guys that would jam on the organ that's where they got it from you know they got it from from guys like john mayall and these guys that were using it in their band but i, I mean it's not a traditional blues instrument either you know it's kind of like so to me it kind of that was the only thing i didn't like about the songs. i mean i like the songs but that organ was like kind of annoying me. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I, I think I cut you off, Victor. No, I just I like the I like this the album, and maybe it's because I'm comparing it to more modern people like Stevie Ray Vaughan and stuff like that. That it sounds more traditional, but uh, I mean, because if you go way way back, blues music is pretty much one guy with a guitar, acoustic guitar, just playing a few chords and singing and. Pretty much, that's pretty much it. Maybe tapping his foot, you know, to get a beat going. You know, I don't know how traditional you want to be, get, but I guess it's more traditional than Stevie Ray, but not as traditional as, you know, uh, to what it is now. It, it's more electric, you know. It's it's a little more uh, rock and roll or kind of a, a combination of the both, but... Uh, yeah, I, I guess because, like I said, I'm comparing it to something that's more current, but uh, I can see y'all's point too. So I was going to say, Vic, I've, I've always been kind of like curious about like why these bands in the '60s, these British bands, were so blues influenced. You, know, you look at the Beatles; they always reference Chuck Berry being like a big influence to them, and you look at Led Bobby Zeppelin, Holly. Eric Clapton, the Rolling Stones. You know, all these big bands that came out of that British invasion. And they all they all say, you know, like they all mention these big blues players like Muddy Waters and them as big influence. And I was wondering what that why that was. So I kind of did a little bit of searching and just real quick to let you guys know. So during World War II, right after World War II or around that time, there were a lot, a lot of black soldiers that went were stationed in England. And when they were there, they took a lot of their albums with them. And these British soldiers there were, you know, they liked them. And so they buy them off of these black soldiers and listen to them so they were saying that's one of the ways that blues music started making it into england and then also a lot of these ports these these ports where a lot of ships would come in from all around the world you'd have sometimes these sailors that would come in from america with these blues albums and they would trade and sell them to the british people you know that were there at the ports and so like liverpool london a lot of these places where a lot of these bands started you know people got familiar with the blues music so they started Kind of like trying to imitate it, you know, try to see if they could play it and, and imitate it themselves. And they sort of created like their own style. And one of the biggest, they were saying that one of the biggest events that happened that had like a big impact on people in, in England was when Muddy Waters went over there to England. And he was known as an acoustic guitar player, played acoustic slide guitar, but he was transitioning into electric guitar. So when he got there to England, he played it with the electric guitar. And they were all these like British people were like, holy crap, that's that sounds awesome. So they started picking up electric guitars and trying to play the blues with electric guitars. And these people were like their kids, you know, these kids of these people, these GIs that were that were there in England. Which makes sense if you think about it, because right after the world, you know, World War II, it's like 1945 or so. Looking at the 60s, you know, most of these kids are like 15, 16 year old. You know, you're, you could imagine John Lennon and Paul McCartney hearing, the, you know, their dads playing these records. And they're, you know, sort of like trying to emulate these records on electric guitar. And then now all of a sudden, now you have this new sound, you know, that they're creating. So if you look at the history of it, you can kind of understand like why they chose to play the music the way that they do, you know. And I, don't, and I think in a way, it's not really so much that they're trying to imitate it exactly like the, the black blues players, but they're kind of adding like their own style to it. So I guess they already had their own influences from Europe, but they just kind of blended that in with what they were hearing from the GIs and the blues. Exactly. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, also, you have to think that that was like, um, you know, that not not too far before that, you know, Elvis was like a really big name. And uh, 
um, rock and roll was just, you know, was, was like really starting and um, it was starting to, um, um, to evolve as well. And uh, so that music was popular over there. And so, you know, where did, you know, where did rock, rock and roll get its music from again? Mm-hmm. You know, that was from the blues. Uh, yeah, the blues and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, American jazz and blues. You know, uh, music that uh, that black artists had been doing all this time and was, you know, slowly being taken over by um, white musicians. So. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you know, if, if rock was really popular and it was popular over there and then, you know, there, they would have heard those influences in, in rock and roll as well. Um, but, uh, that's interesting. I did not know that about the, uh, about the war. Yeah. And that's the way that, that, you know, white, white people get exposed to that kind of music because they probably would have never listened to, you know, black people playing blues music. Yeah. Like you mentioned Elvis, you know, Elvis was inspired by black gospel singers and, you know, black blues musicians. And he took it. And the only reason rock became so big was because, I mean, I hate to say it, but it was a time where, you know, there was a lot of racism. So him being a white, you know, singer was more accepted, you know, but you had a bunch of other guys that were doing a lot of the same things. He was like Chuck Berry and them. Yeah, exactly. And in a way, yeah. But you know what I mean? He kind of opened it up for them, you know, because then people started saying like, well, who else plays music like this? And then now they start using these black musicians exactly. and then, yeah. you know, but, but I mean, it, it's kind of like, you know, we usually think of Elvis as the king of rock, but there were other guys doing this before him. They just weren't as accepted as, as he was. So it's sad that it has to go through, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. though. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, that was the only way they would have, they would have heard it. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I was. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, I I didn't realize that they had sent all these um, uh, black uh, soldiers over there. Um, mm-hmm. I wasn't aware of that. Pot Squad's getting a little controversial here. Sorry, I went on. Oh. <laughs> we need um, a little controversy. <laughs> so, uh, but he's still around. This guy is still around. He's like 89 years old. John Bell. Yeah. 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 He uh, he just retired. I believe it was last year. Um, you know he he's been touring and stuff, um, even into you know this advanced age. Uh, but uh, with COVID and everything hitting, he had decided to kind of slow down. So uh, I believe he finally said you know he was retiring this year. Um, mm-hmm. But he did put out an album. There's a brand new album out. So. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I check that out. I know Eric Clapton's still going strong. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I was, you know what? I, I was so surprised that all the different people, all the different musicians that have gone um through his uh through his band. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. there was there was uh, John McVee mm-hmm. and John Lee Hooker, <laughs> John Lee Hooker, and uh yeah, definitely Eric Clapton, um, and all these other um musicians that uh like kind of went had, um, and made their own bands later some of them even like while they were playing in his band mm-hmm. decided to like go off together and uh make their own uh make their own bands or make their own music and albums and um uh, um but he's like yeah just bring it on mm-hmm. he uh he he's a invited a lot of them to uh continue recording and come back and so i guess he's a very very forgiving guy i don't know if i would be uh all that forgiving if somebody you know if uh if jose and uh Vic decided that like, wow we're gonna go make our own podcast goodbye <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go make our own um that would be going solo. That'd be going duo, I guess. I <laughs> true, true. <laughs> We're going to call ourselves a pod duo sessions. How's that? Pod duo sessions. <laughs> duo. Like one of those flea market things. It, it's not a Seiko. It's a Seiko. <laughs> uh, 
Yes. <laughs> the pod quates. <laughs> quates. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So um, I guess, uh, was there any song in particular that you liked above others or? Oh, I liked them all, uh, but that like I said, that first one, I know that Stevie Ray Vaughan does a version of that. And I thought it was interesting to compare, you know, mm -hmm. it was their version of it compared to his version of it. His is a lot faster, uh, but it was good. I mean, it was a solid album from beginning to end. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's one fast. where it, I think it's the longest one on there. I'm not sure what it's called, but uh, Clapton plays. It's like a five minute song. Yeah, so it's long. Six, it's almost six minutes. It's, it's almost uh, like six heard. minutes. But I but yeah. I love it. I mean, and, and I I think because it has a lot of guitar in it. It's got Clapton playing, and he he plays like a real different um, different style. He plays a Gibson on this album, which. Not the, the usual instrument he plays anymore. He plays a Fender, now Stratocaster. And um, and he runs it through a Marshall amplifier, which is like what a lot of rock and roll guys were doing after that. That's kind of, that was like the traditional thing to do when you did rock. And Aerosmith did it, ACDC did it. They would run a Gibson guitar all the way through a Marshall amplifier. And But Clapton was the first guy doing that, and he does it on this album, and it makes it sound like real raunchy, real... It's like, you know, like... And the guitar just sounds it just sounds good i like it it's, it fits the style yeah. of the music so and they were an interesting story that guitar because they said a few years after this they stole it so it was like oh, this really? like valuable it's, it's like this holy grail of like guitars they call it the oh. the um the, the blues breaker they call it and so they said they never knew whatever happened to it and um some people claim that you know they know where it's at they say that somebody has it like you know in their home or something but and nobody knows exactly what happened to it. You know, that thing just, just like disappeared. Oh. Wow. Interesting. I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah. The Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Well, uh, I definitely like this album better uh, as far as Blues End than the Screaming Jay Hawkins one. <laughs> I just didn't think that other one was going to fit our Screaming Jay's an acquired taste <laughs> yeah yeah. I was, well, I I was reading about that I did like it though I did like. I didn't it. listen to the album I didn't listen to it so I don't know kind of scared to listen to it now <laughs> they were saying that the guy used to do like because I don't know if y'all read his, his I actually read his biography before I I didn't even listen to the thing so they were saying he was an opera singer Oh, and he really? needed to make money, so they they told him some record company told him, "Look, you, we have this record we want you to do." And so he started like singing rock, and he didn't like it. Well, then he made a hit with that song. I got I put a spell on you. Mm -hmm. So then he started recording, like you know, as that screaming Jay Hawkins. But he goes, "That wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to sing opera." All and right. then when he went on stage, um, I don't know how it came about, but he started doing like voodoo, like on the stage and stuff, like to like, <laughs> shock people. <laughs> And they were yeah. saying that it, it kind of became like a, like he's kind of like the godfather of, of like shock rock, like Alice Cooper and all these people. Ah, like, you know, they, they say that he's sort of like the guy that started it all because he would come on stage and he would like have like severed heads and stuff. Yeah, and, a skull on his face. Yeah, and all this. I was like, I was like, wow, that's pretty good. I, I like, remember seeing some videos uh, of, of him uh, doing that song and just acting really, really strange. <laughs> yeah. But I guess, I guess he had, again, and you know, a big influence, just like these guys who were the blues guys were talking yeah. about, you know. Yeah. Huh. So I'm looking at the playlist, and I think that song you were talking about with the so guitar solo was uh, "Have You Heard?" because that's the that's almost a six minute song. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's a huh? thing. Have you heard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they said that that's the first recording of Clapton singing lead on a song like ever. Oh really? Yeah, because that's before he even went with Cream. I think right after that he, oh wow. he went with a guy that was on in the band too, like like Belinda said, is Jack Bruce, and then they got yeah. together and they went and they formed Cream <laughs> after that. And then I think they had John McVie playing bass on it, mm -hmm. and then later he went with Mick Fleetwood, who was in the band too, mm -hmm. Peter Green, and they formed the first version of uh, Fleetwood oh, Mac before Mac. before yep. Lindsey Buckingham and before Stevie Nicks. Mm 
Yeah. A lot of people don't know Fleetwood Mac was like a, a blues band when they first started out. Yeah, I think I heard that. Anyway, I'm talking too much, y'all. No, huh? no, not at all. You got the knowledge, sir. And another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Clapton's shoe size was nine and a half. <laughs> hey, if you don't, you know it. <laughs> John, John Miles' eye was one centimeter lower than the other one, his right eye. So, oh, know. my gosh. <laughs> that kind of like, you know, Jason Voorhees look kind of like. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, um, anything else y'all want to add? So do you all, do you all agree that it should be on the list of all time best blues albums? I well, think so only because of the way that, like we said, like those musicians that went through the band, you know, the, that later on went on to form other bands, you know, Mick Taylor for, went on with the Rolling Stones. And then, you know, you got all these other, other guys at that time, you know, like the Yardbirds where you had, um, where you have on that, in that one, Clapton, yeah, Jimmy Page, and Jeff Beck. It was kind of like a little renaissance going on at that time. And I think John Mayall, that that band and that album, this this album were like kind of the beginning of all that that led to like yeah, yeah. other bands to do that. So I would say, yeah, I would say, yeah, we would in that sense, it would be kind of influential. I think it would, you know. I agree. <laughs> oh, I, I I agree too. Yeah, no, yeah. Susan, did you get to listen to it? Oh yeah, you did, because you said it did sound like um like British rock. Or not British rock, Brit British uh, blues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sound like British rock? <laughs> well, no, not British. It just sounded British, you know, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, like I they were, saw. They're drinking uh, Earl Grey tea while they were. <laughs> and then they played, yeah, Beatles song, and then it just <laughs> threw me off a little. and. Yeah. And then, I don't know, this was a hard one and it wasn't complete because there was no women in this. Yeah. On the list or you mean on that album? No, just, I mean, on the list, I guess. Who would you have liked to have seen on that list, Susan? Well, I know there's a lot of women, I mean, I've like only Billie. heard it like song-wise. I know they don't have albums of women, like Billie Holiday or something like that. Yeah. Go for oh, there was there were quite a few Small on the Lady. there were quite a few on the list um, I, on one of the other lists. <clears throat> um, but this one, uh, he he, this particular album was like on all three lists that I looked at. Mm. Big Mama Thornton. That, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Mal Rowley. Yeah. Mal Rowley and yeah. Ma, Ma Rainey. And uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot. Um uh I don't know. Maybe we can do another uh album later, uh like focus on uh on women. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. Obviously, I'm kind of into that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, everybody knows about your love for Jackie Vincent. Yes. Hold good. him down. Jackie yeah, Vincent. Hold him down. <laughs> I'm at the beach. Calm down. <laughs> we know. We see the shirt. You're the one that got us going on this uh, female version. I'm just falling in step with you, you know. More, We're more starting to reach stalk, stalker status, sir. Yes, yes, I have. Scary. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Susan, do you think it? Do you think this album uh, belongs on the list? Which one? The the John Mayall one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. We it just we gotta look at the different 
point, you know, there's like you all been saying, there's different types, yeah, different mm-hmm. forms, different ways they play it, you know, mm-hmm. different different times, you know, from back then to now, you know. I mean, yeah, there was, were all was BB, kinds of different. BB uh, King on there on. too. Who? BB King. Yes, BB King was also on there. What's that? Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is a there's a ton of different subgenres. So uh, mm-hmm. I just thought, okay, well, let's try this. I thought what you made a good choice. I liked it. Yeah. Good. Good. But I, I don't know what they would have been singing about, you know, like, you know, the blues, black, you know, African American blues players, yeah. like, you know, sing about the plantations and what are they singing yeah. about, like, you know, fish and chips or like their tea's too cold <laughs> or something or the tea's too cold here. <laughs> My tea was cold today. <laughs> Philly. Well, they had um, a, a couple of songs mentioned, uh, like they mentioned a farm. And at first I thought it was like a farm farm. But then I got to thinking, is it like a prison, like a working prison type? Mm. I didn't even have time to look that up. Yeah, I got um, it right Par- Parchment Farm. Yeah, that's one. And then there's another one that uh, mentioned the farm, like in the lyrics. And I thought... Hmm. That does not sound like a regular farm. <laughs> it sounds like somebody, uh, you know, like they have a work crew out there. Mm-hmm. You know, well, in this case, they were picking cotton. Is what they're like. One of the songs says that they're picking cotton, um, mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah, it sounded more like um, like a work gang, you know, like from a from mm-hmm. a prison or something. Mm-hmm. Could be. Could be. Hmm. Could be. Could be. Jose, you're on. You're on it. You get to do some research on that now. All right, man. I'm on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> and while Jose is doing that, Mike, what is your oh. take on the? Uh, <laughs> you're serious. <laughs> this music. Jose, <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said. I'm- Coming off the road, I slept all day. I'm not quite prepared for this episode. Ah, okay. But I'm here, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, all those musicians you mentioned, you know, I mean, just went on to prominent careers of their own. I mean, just, but it all, it's all rooted in the blues. Obviously, these guys are, were deeply influenced. Uh, that's they were listening to the American music in England, and they came back here with a vengeance and, mm-hmm. and well, for, for a spell through the '60s. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, Eric Clapton is probably one of the ones that, I think, one of the front runners with when it came to blues guitar, blues mm-hmm. rock guitar, without a doubt. You know, mm-hmm. we can all the Cream albums or even a. Uh, as far as a, a white guy playing blues, I think he's probably the, the best known or at least the, the longest, uh, um, mm-hmm. you know, like, the, well, yeah, the best known, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the ones who has been working the longest um, mm-hmm. other than, than male. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, but yeah. But it's funny because I never really when I got exposed to Eric Clapton, you know, as a kid in the seventies, mm-hmm. I was more familiar with like, you know, Layla, and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and the dominoes. Yeah. You know, cocaine, not, not, I mean the song, not that I was exposed <laughs> to cocaine, but <laughs> cocaine as a kid. that might explain why I'm like the way I am. But um, <laughs> aside from that, you know, I shot the sheriff. I mean, I'm not admitting to that. I'm saying the song, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I was familiar with that. So I never thought of him as a blues musician. And then when he did that in the 90s, remember that unplugged stuff was like real, real big. Everybody was doing like an unplugged album. You had the Nirvana doing <laughs> one and you know, everybody, everybody wanted to do one. And then Eric Clapton did it and I bought the, the CD. And there was a lot of blues stuff on there he was doing. And, and 
that's when I started going back and listening to his earlier stuff. And I realized that, yeah, you know, that's how he started out as a blues, mm-hmm. blues guitar player. So that's, an album. A, oh, that's a CD. Uh, what's that? What's a CD? It's uh, Eric Clapton. I think it's just called Unplugged. I think it is. It's just an unplugged. He has uh, another one called From the Cradle. That's also a really bluesy uh, uh, mm. CD. From the Cradle. And he did one with B.B. King, too. I think he did re- called Riding with the King. Mm. I'm making fun. What is a CD? Oh, I just said, <laughs> what was the C- name of the CD? Oh, okay. <laughs> e- oh, my God. Old school, but guys, gee. <laughs> it's this thing that you use now to put your drinks on, like as a coaster, you know? Like, <laughs> like this CD, make oh, yeah. that, thing that I got. I mean, like, yeah, it's like that one. Put it down enough already. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> yes. Hey. Yeah. So Victor's going to be doing all summer. He's going to jump in a BW van. Or like I know. Or... <laughs> you should have gotten a anyway. poster and put it up behind you. You mean like this one here? This yeah, just like that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's, he's got a vial around his neck with the hair of the oh my of Jackie Venison. <laughs> Venison? <laughs> is that her name? No. No. Oh, Jackie Venison, isn't it? No. Not a, not a deer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Venson. Okay. I saw that right now on your shirt. Oh, <laughs> like, my God. I can't hear you guys saying it. I thought it was you were saying venison. I was like, <laughs> show us the red solo cup. <laughs> it's still got the lipstick imprint on it and everything. <laughs> and a little baggy. Got the Ziploc. Got the DNA. I get in a Ziploc DNA. bag. Like that. <laughs> One day when they clone people, he's like, I'm going to clone. <laughs> I'm not denying any of that. So yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> oh man. They've come their venison. I can't believe that. I <laughs> like, had it wrong all this time. You must be getting ready to go hunting or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> just the word clear. Tell us her name one more time. <laughs> Jackie Benson. Okay, okay. Right. Got it. Is uh, where is her next uh, stop? Where is she coming to next? She's actually playing uh, Anton's uh, to tonight. Playing wow. Anton's tonight, and she told me she's going to have a residency at Anton's in December. So, and between that, she'll just be all over the place. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she, she she actually told me that. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Vic, come here. I got some stuff to tell you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Next week he's gonna show us his Jackie Venson tattoo. Oh my god. That's what's coming next. There you go. <laughs> no, I'm amazed not I haven't gotten one yet. <laughs> let's make sure they don't put that, venison that we know of <laughs> <laughs> that we know of make sure yeah. they don't put venison instead of venison <laughs> <I'm coming. laughs> yeah, she hasn't, there forever. She hasn't si- signed your chest or anything <laughs> oh no not yet that's the next show <laughs> <laughs> tell her to sign your neck and then get a tattoo <laughs> 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 any other topics uh other than the uh, birthdays and people who passed away like ray liotta that was kind of a shock uh, yeah mm-hmm. yeah um well i had thought about that but i was so uh i was i was not feeling the in memoriam because I didn't want to name 21 people at <laughs> to that list. Um, I don't know. I guess most everybody by now knows that uh, we had a, a school shooting uh, down in Uvalde and uh, lost 21 lives. 
um, it was very sad. And uh, so, yeah, it was a little, I, I was, I was watching that TV all day long. I think you guys were at work, but it was my, my day off that day. Um, so I was watching everything as it was playing out and, and um, it's just very, very sad. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we could mention, uh, <laughs> I guess we could do this as a in memoriam. Um, you know, we, we did lose Ray Liotta and, um, and those 21 lives in, uh, in Uvalde. And uh, I believe there was somebody else that right now, I can't remember who it was. Um, Vangelis. Mm -hmm. Vangelis, okay. Now he was from a couple weeks back, wasn't he? Yeah, but we haven't done a show, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. since, it, since, it since it happened. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, so Vangelis uh, as well, uh, composer and, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just been like a really uh, a bummer week, uh, especially for a lot of uh, people in this area. Um, so I guess um, if you'd like, we can uh, take a drink to them uh, before our, our break here. Um, I know y'all can't see me, but I do have a, a cup here. <laughs> So uh, let's just go ahead and, uh, and raise a glass in their memory and um, honor, honor those lives. All righty. Well, um, I think we should, I don't know, should we take our, a quick break right now and then come back and finish up or... Let's take a quick break. Yeah, let's let, let's break for a little bit, and then um, we'll be right back with uh, birthdays, and uh, now we'll wrap up. Okay, see you in a bit. All right. Okay, we are back then. <laughs> um, we have uh, birthdays to celebrate. Um, May 29th, actor Anthony Gary from General Hospital um, <laughs> is uh, going to be 75. Oh uh, my gosh. Hey. Composer Danny Elfman is at Coachella. 69. There you go. And Neely Brush, another girl I liked, guitar player, yeah. played with him at Coachella. Played at Coachella, but not having a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in promotion uh, mode, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Take that promoter hat off if, right if now. If any of y'all ever run for political office, I'm the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, uh, LaToya Jackson is Ooh. 66. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, there's quite a few. I didn't realize there were so many. Okay, actor Annette Benning is 64. Wow. Huh. Um, actor Ted Levine from Silence of the Lamb and uh, Monk <laughs> is uh, 65. Um, who else? Oh, yeah. He played Buffalo Bill, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, Rupert Everett, uh, Everett. I'm sorry, I mispronounced his name. Actor Rupert Everett is 63. And Adrian Paul from The Highlander. Do y'all remember that show? No? Oh, my gosh. What is it again? Highlander. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. the movie. I don't know if it was a show. They made a show, Paul. yeah. Yeah, they had a show. They did a TV series. Um, was that three. Adrian Paul? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, singer Melissa Etheridge is 61. How old is he? Huh? He didn't say his age. Yeah, he did. 63. Oh. Singer Mel Melissa Etheridge is 61. Lisa Welchel from The Facts of Life is 59. Mm. Oh, my God. <gasps> I'm feeling very old all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Guitarist Noel Gallagher from Oasis is 55. Mm. Um. 
Guitarist Chan Kinchla of Blues Traveler is 53. Uh, Laverne Cox from Orange is the New Black is 50. Um, what else? Melanie Brown, also known as Scary Spice from the Spice Girls, is 47. Mm. Um, so many. I didn't think there was going to be that many. Um, anyway, so to all those people who are having birthdays on the 29th and the rest of the week, um, we say happy birthday. Happy birthday. So happy birthday. Ready to go. I like it. <laughs> Yay! You rock, Susan. <laughs> Team <Teamed> up. <laughs> you better tell Jackie Vincent to yes, be careful. Oh, boy. oh man, I feel sorry for y'all when it's her birthday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Trust me, I'll find out. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I know, I right? Oh, right. Yeah. Not yet. He's going straight to Anton from here. With that. I'm going straight to Anton. He's going to take out a driver's license, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I do know. To change his last name to Vincent. <laughs> hey, Vic Vincent has a nice ring to it. Hey, yeah. He does roll off the tongue, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> When I become her agent, I'm going to change my name to Vic Vincent. <laughs> All right, Tom Parker, Colonel Tom Parker over there trying to. All right. Um, well, anything else that we uh, want to talk about? It's a, kind of a short uh, show today, but that's okay. Yeah, Team Dev. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you gotta admit. I, I mean, I didn't see it, but the parts I saw were really. <laughs> yeah, it's been a crazy uh, couple months. That we started off with the uh, the Will Smith, you know, thing going on, and then we ran right into <laughs> Deb versus Heard. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hopefully they'll get all of that settled up soon and uh, we won't have to listen to any more of those uh, stories. <laughs> I don't know. I've got some drag racing going on on my care. Oh, my goodness. Again? <laughs> of course. It's a holiday. It's Saturday. I mean, Sunday. Sunday. It's Friday. Not it's whatever. No, <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do we want to add anything else? Memorial <laughs> Memorial Day. A what? Memorial Day. Mm. Memorial. Oh, Memorial. That's right. Tomorrow's Memorial Day. So uh I want we should have uh let's take another drink. Let's take another drink. Um <laughs> remember our fallen uh men and women uh, in the military. Um, I should have added that onto the uh, in memoriam earlier, but I completely forgot. Um, no, I'm surprised, Belinda, you're not drinking out of your box of wine. So. <laughs> you don't know what I am oh, yeah. oh. drinking. Oh. <laughs> can't tell. <laughs> you can't tell. All right, and... There we go. Clink, clink. Clink, clink. clink. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Hey, uh, anything else? Anybody remember anything else that we need to let it, everyone know? Other than check out our um, Facebook and our website and our YouTube. And now you can listen to us on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Anchor Podcasts. And show ideas, please. Yes, show, share some ideas. What would you like us to, is there anything you want us to review? 
Is there a book you would like us to read? Is there uh, an album you would like us to listen to? Maybe, maybe you have found the ne next uh, Jackie Benson and you want us to know who that is. Um, share your ideas with us. Uh, if you look uh, below, uh, we're going to have our um, our website uh, information and email addresses and all that stuff, all that good stuff down there. Um, and um, I don't know. I think that is it, guys. I don't, unless y'all have like last minute, it's your last chance. No. I think we're good. I think we're okay. Good. I I think that's okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh we will say goodbye and we'll see you next time with a brand new topic and we hope to hear from you soon bye 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 bye, bye. <laughs> bye.